Have you ever wondered how scope blends in with cost and schedule? Keep in mind, to succeed long term in your career, we're going to have to at least, as systems engineers, get familiar with the project management triangle, cost, scope, and schedule. And this session is going to deal with scope. Now, scope basically dictates what do we do in the project? What requirements? Are we going to satisfy what design features are we going to make sure that are in there? It's the amount of work that once we're complete, once that scope is completed, then the project's considered done. Sometimes there's money left over, sometimes we haven't quite got all the scope in before we might need to ask for more money. Okay, that's not a good situation. But as systems engineers, we need to be able to scope our own work and at least tell other people, particularly our, our manager or our project lead, how long is it going to take to complete certain tasks and how many of these tasks can we complete in a certain time and if you're looking at cost a certain budget now one thing that may help you is to break scope into three different sections now th again we're going to talk a larger project but this can scale down into smaller tasks and even your individual work now if if you start with the function of a product, so what, what does it need to do? What functions does it have? What are the requirements? Uh, you can also say what needs does it satisfy? Okay, so you got needs, requirements, and then for the design. Okay, we have a design. What, what, what can we implement there? A lot of times we can implement the same function with two very different designs, and those two designs might be much, uh, might have a very different cost, they might have a very different time length in terms of how long it takes to implement. Uh, in fact, my dad was working on a project where they were working on a control system. And the, uh, they, they had two different systems there. Uh, he came up with a, a simple uh, three-stage controller and then someone else, maybe he was a little younger at the time, came up with something that was much more sophisticated. And they both did the same thing, but uh, my Dad's was, was far easier to implement. That meant it was quicker to do, and then that would allow other features to be blended in because there was still money left. So that's how, in, in a way, it can relate back to scope. So, so the first part is what does it do? What are the function, functions, needs, requirements, design features? Uh, the second one, and this could be the most expensive part of it all, is the verification and the validation. Tests can often be the most expensive item to try and budget and schedule around for your technical program. Uh, so certainly getting the scope is complex. Sometimes it needs a, a fair amount of work, but to actually design something doesn't take, in my experience, as long as setting up the test, designing the test, running the test, paying the technicians to operate the test, and then collecting the data. So, so this, very much ties into scope because here is where you can either save a lot of money or if you want to reduce your verification and validation sometimes that's appropriate then maybe you can put in a, a function that is a key customer desirable so, so something that's very desired by the customer now a third part which should not be the biggest part of it but it does need to be included is reporting and overhead so reporting i consider you know, your earned value, your project management. Uh, that's different than line management, but, but perhaps part of your, your scope, part of your project needs to account for uh, paying some overhead to, and that overhead is what pays line management. Uh, the, the, usually this happens in slightly larger companies, but still, if you work in a medium to large size organization, uh, this could be an issue. So you have to consider overhead and sometimes roll that into the uh, sometimes roll it into the scope you know how, how many uh, another aspect of this is how many technicians would you need uh, do you need secretarial support IT support uh, maybe even human relations support and it's, it, it could be varies according to the organization the point is you know, there are things that are not technical and they're not designed and they're also not part of test either uh, that are part of a, a project scope. Now, we, this sometimes comes in a little more with cost. However, the, again, cost, scope, and schedule are very tied together. So, for a scope, what you need to know is three different areas, uh, design and the actual function, 
uh, testing. Uh, those two should form the bulk of the scope. And sometimes there's maybe some reporting, some mandatory briefings or checkpoints, gate reviews, whatever you call them. Sometimes they, that needs to be included in, in the task list. Now, at the end of all this scope, the point is to get the, the master task list. So we, once we know all the activities we need to do, now all of a sudden we can start time estimating the tasks on the list. And once we estimate time, then we can estimate labor, figure out who we need to bring on board for, for given tasks. Now we're starting to estimate costs. Okay, and labor could be the most tricky part to, for cost estimation. But for here, for scope, keep these three in mind. And you know, your estimates, what you're able to promise to the customer, you know, that's going to be pretty accurate more times than not. I'll see you in the next session. And if you have any questions or have uh, some other thoughts, message me directly. Or you can comment uh, where you're able to comment. And let me know.